Low-cost European airline Ryanair reporting half-year results this morning. Profits falling by nearly 20 percent from a year ago. The company citing cheaper summer fares. The company also trimming its passenger forecast because of delivery delays from Boeing. Joining us right now to talk about all of it is Ryanair Holdings Group CEO Michael O'Leary. Um, the Irish budget airline group, which is Boeing's biggest customer outside of the United States, operates Ryanair, Ryanair UK, Malta Air, Lada and Buzz Carriers. And Michael, thank you so much for being here. Great to be back here, Becky. Good to see you. So the stock is up this morning by about half a percent on the news. Um, profit was down. That wasn't unexpected because of what happened uh, with fares over the summer. Where do fares stand right now? Uh, the, the fares declined this summer by about 10% in the first half of the year, which surprised us. I mean, it was weaker than we thought it would be. Uh, but I think a lot of that was to do with the, with this dispute with the online travel agents who boycotted us last year. That hit us through the summer. We responded by lowering airfares, filling up the planes anyway. Uh, the, most of those online travel agents have come back online on our terms. Uh, the, pr the price declines are moderating into the third quarter. Four bookings into the December quarter are strong. Uh, the price decline is going to be less, we think, between 0 and 5%. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the frustration we have is still the Boeing delivery delays. So we've mm -hmm. now had to trim back our traffic forecast for next year from 215 million passengers to 210. Yeah. But I think that means there's going to be upward pressure on pricing through the summer of 2025. We'll have less capacity. We'll be delivering less growth. Demand is strong. Interest rates are coming down across Europe. Uh, and uh, I'd be reasonably optimistic, which is, I think, why the share price has responded well to the, the call this morning. It, it almost sounds like you think the Boeing delays are good news for profits. You don't have to pay for the new planes coming in up front, and you're going to have less ability throughout the entire industry. Um, you know, I mean, it kind of it's, it's a strange way. I mean, I, yeah, speaking as a shareholder, I think the Boeing delays are good for our business. Speaking as a CEO who wants to continue to grow and, you know, take share from competitors, uh, the Boeing delays are bad for my, my, my market growth ambitions. Um, we got stuck this year. Boeing left us 20 aircraft short. We'd recruited all the pilots and the cabin crew, so the costs were a little bit higher this summer than we had. Uh, we've lost 5 million passengers this year because of those delays. We're going to lose another 10 million passengers next year because of these delays. But I speak weekly with Stephanie Pope in, in, in Seattle. I think she's doing a great job. She's there, she's on the ground. There's someone you can actually lift the phone and, and talk to. Uh, they're having a vote tonight. Uh, hopefully they'll vote in favour. I mean, a 38% pay increase. They should take it and run. Um, but we want to see Boeing back make an aircraft as quickly as possible. We still have 29 aircraft deliveries in advance of summer of next year. Mm -hmm. We think we'll only get half of those, maybe 14 or 15 aircraft, which is why we've walked back our growth for summer 2025. We'll get the remainder in time for summer 26. And then the big issue for us, I think what I'm most heartened by is, even during the strike, they still, keep their, their, they still work on the MAX 7 certification mm -hmm. and the Boeing MAX 10 certification. She's pretty confident they're going to get those both certified in uh, 2025. And then we take the first 17 of the MAX 10s in time for summer 2027. And these aircraft have 20% more seats, burn 20% less fuel. They are going to rocket fuel our growth and our cost advantage over every other airline in Europe for the next decade. We, we just had an analyst on who, uh, who covers Boeing and said that every month that they are on strike, means a delay of probably 9 to 12 months before you actually get the aircraft that are not being put together. That's how big the, 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 the whipsaw is. If this doesn't get passed tonight, would you change your tune about what you're thinking? I wouldn't. I mean, if it doesn't get passed tonight, you know, I think it's going to delay by another two or three weeks. I, mean, I think there's a reasonable prospect gets passed tonight. I think the pressure is on Boeing, certainly from the administration here, to get this thing fixed. I'm not sure fixing it tonight is going to make much difference to how people vote tomorrow. But if it doesn't get fixed tonight, then I think it won't get fixed for another couple of weeks. We're coming into the end of November, Thanksgiving, December, it's Christmas. This is not a great time of the year anyway. We've pretty much decided that we're not going to see our nine Q4 deliveries until Q1 of next year. Uh, and I don't think it, if the strike drags on through November, I don't think that'll make much difference. It will delay, however, how many of the summer 2025 aircraft we get. So if it delays much more into the end of November, I think we'll have, we won't get 15 for next summer. We might only get five or 10. You're a tough negotiator. You have been with Boeing in the past, and you have called them out when you thought the management yeah. was not doing the right things. I hear a little bit of negotiation in what you're describing right now. How, how does that impact you? You're not going to be getting what was promised to you. How do they make good on that? I, they, they, I mean, to be fair, they don't. We get some modest compensation for these delivery delays, but it's small beer compared to, like this year, we've lost 5 million passengers. 
uh, you know, no amount of compensation would make up for the, the profit we would have made out of those 5 million passengers this year. Next year, we're going to be 10 million passengers down on our original targets. But look, we are where we are. We've got to work with Stephanie Pope, uh, Kelly Ortenberg, the new management team. Uh, you know, I'm, I am, must say I'm impressed by the job she's doing. You know, the fact that she's there, she's on the ground, she's trying to fix the issues. I promise I'm going to go out and, uh, to Seattle, uh, meet with her, talk to the, 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 the teams sometime in January or February next year. Mm -hmm. We need to get Boeing back up and running. Yes. But, you know, <laughs> Boeing did get an awful lot of unfair criticism at the moment, some of which they deserve. But Airbus's production is just as badly disrupted as Boeing's is. Mm. Airbus have engines that have to come off the aircraft mm. to get repaired. But Boeing gets all the negative PR. Um, it's unfortunate, I think they are, but Boeing are at a low point now. I think Boeing will come back strongly in 25 and 26. When you say Stephanie Pope is there and there's somebody at least who will answer the phone on the other side, was that not happening before? No, I mean, unfortunately, I think the guy, the, guy, you know, the people who were in Seattle weren't in Seattle uh, under the previous administration. Now, I accept uh, Dave Calhoun, uh, who I dealt with in Boeing before. He, I think he did a remarkable job. He got the, you know, the, the max ungrounded. Um, but I think having his management in Seattle weren't ever in Seattle. They were sales guys who were on tour around the world talking to customers. We need people who are in Seattle fixing problems. And I think uh, I'm very heartened by the job that Stephanie Pope is doing. I'm working closely. I speak to her weekly. Uh, we have a, week, a kind of Friday afternoon call. Sometimes the news isn't good, but at least she's doing her best to get the thing solved. She can do nothing until we get the Labour thing resolved. I hope it gets resolved in November. Mm -hmm. But one way or another, it means I'm going to be, Reiner's going to be a little, we'll carry about 210 million passengers next year instead of 215. And that should be good for pricing. The big, I think, news that shareholders took from our conference call this morning was the fact that our unit costs this year are flat. You know, so even though we've grown by 10 million passengers, we're the only airline in Europe where unit costs have been flat. Everybody else is struggling to maintain our, uh, our struggling with cost increases. So the gap between us and every other European airline is widening. And uh, if we see any upside in pricing next year, I think that's going to flow straight through to our bottom line and to shareholders. You mentioned that most of the online travel agents have come back in. Um, Booking.com has not yet. No. How, how much of your travel are they responsible for? They're tiny. I mean, Booking.com are not big in Europe. Uh, there's e two who haven't come back in. Booking.com, who are tiny in Europe, and Edreams, e e Spanish uh, OTA. They're bigger in Spain, but I mean, uh, in our overall universe, they're still pretty small. I mean, I, but I don't think their models can survive. I mean, when we have ni over 90% of OTAs now distributing Ryanair fares at Ryanair prices, it's very hard to see how Booking.com and eDreams can continue to survive inflating Ryanair prices, uh, which means they're going to keep losing market share to their, com to their OTA competitors. The critical thing for us is we will fight with the OTAs on every beach and every hill and every field. We will not let ever let somebody get between us and our customers. I started off in this business back in the 80s and 90s when the GDSs were, you know, uh, charging 10% for distribution and travel agents another 10%. The internet came along. We've taken that 20% back. We're never giving it away again because we want to pass it on to customers in the form of lower airfares.